Has anybody here gone through a school system ever heard this conversation about mental leaching, energy drains, glucose conservation of the brain? Zero. Zero. Every f***ing school system. The older I get, the more I learn, the more I rage against the system. It's even worse than I thought. For each person here who wants to become an entrepreneur, I'm going to teach you something that as a principle is completely forgotten in the modern world, and it's not Parkinson's disease, it's Parkinson's syndrome. Parkinson's syndrome is a business term. Parkinson's disease is a, you know, a neuromuscular degenerative disease, but the one I'm talking about is the one that makes you broke. So Parkinson's disease means this, you're an entrepreneur, you have, you spend one hour a day on eight different things, marketing, you know, c customer support, whatever it is. So now you decide you're gonna be smart. You go, man, eight hours a day, I'm doing one hour on these eight things. It's eating up my whole day. I have no time to plan and do new things. So you go, let me hire eight people. So you hire eight people, Bob, George, Susie, Billy, all, all the people, okay? So now you go, or let's say you hire seven people and you're the eighth. So you would think the day's gonna be great. You're gonna wake up, you're gonna do your one hour worth of work, and everyone else is gonna do their one hour worth of work, right? That's not what happens. What Parkinson's law predicts, it's a business term, is that people will fill up their time. If you give them one hour worth of work, but you pay them for eight hours, they will, sl they will make it slower so that they get paid for their whole eight hours. It's called loss of productivity. That's what productivity means. By the way, that's why, that's the only thing the US has to do to fix its entire economy. It has nothing to do with all this bullshit that all politicians talk about. They're all full of shit, every single one of them. The way you make America more productive is you do, you avoid Parkinson's disease. America has 330 million people. If every single person in America was twice as productive, and remember, most people aren't productive at all. They're a drain on society. If everybody was just twice as productive, twice as productive, remember Elon Musk is a thousand times more productive than you and I. But I'm just asking people to be twice as good. Then America's GDP would go from 15 trillion to 30 trillion. Tax receipts would go from three trillion to six trillion. Without raising the tax rate, you wouldn't have to increase taxes on anybody, the rich or the poor. Now you'd have six trillion in taxes and our budget, we wouldn't have any deficit. We wouldn't lose money. We only spend like four or five trillion, uh, sorry, we take in I think three or four trillion and we spend like six trillion. So we're going in debt. That's why we'd be going, depending on the year. But if Americans were more productive, right, the same 330 million people were more productive, guess what would happen? You'd have more money in the total pie to tax. So you wouldn't raise tax rate. That's why I said GDP would go to 30 trillion instead of 15 trillion. If you take on average, let's say the average tax rate is about 25%, you'd raise seven trillion and it would pay for everything. New roads, Obamacare or whatever healthcare, it's all solvable by one thing, become productive and people ain't fucking productive. So when you hire those eight people for you, what they'll do is they'll go, well, it's nine to five. I really have a one hour job, but I'll just slowly space that shit out. Now, they won't even think of it. It's a subconscious thing that goes on in humans' brains. Most people are lazy, I promise you. The amount of people that I know that aren't lazy, it's so low, it's beyond low. And here's where people are lazy. They won't think creatively for you, so they work with you. Any problem they encounter is like a brick wall. You're, you're like, hey, can you, you know, run down the store and I need a tripod for film equipment. Can you go to Sammy's camera? That employee will go down, they know they're getting paid, no, 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 no go to, drive back. Sammy's didn't have a tripod, sorry. Zero creativity. You'll be like, did you go to the other store next door to it? Oh no, you didn't say to do that. You just said to go to Sammy's. Well, you're not a robot. You get the point I was saying, try Sammy's if they don't have it, go somewhere else. That's creativity. So people are A, mentally lazy, and this is by far the most. When we think of laziness, we think of people who, you know, won't take a shovel and dig a hole when you're digging a hole, and so they're like physically lazy. Yeah, it's a little bit of physical laziness, but for the most part, people are so mentally lazy. I can't, and I'm gonna, I'll give you a test to test on your friends. Bring up something that's important, but nobody knows in the room. Watch and just time this. How long till somebody reaches their phone to start Googling it? You know why people don't do that? They're lazy, and there's a reason. 
I wrote an article many years ago called The Balancer of the Brain. Your brain tries to conserve glucose. Back in history, it was very hard to get glucose, sugar, and carbohydrates for your brain. So ancient times, you know what most of our ancestors did? Literally, they laid around all the time. They've done studies of nomadic tribes. They spend most of their time laying around. They forage for food about three hours a day, and the rest of the time they lay around because they have to conserve energy because they can't get enough calories. I think the average, Dr. David Buss did some research, the average like person, uh, there's a tribe in Tanzania, Africa, called the Hanzas or something, I forget the exact name, but they only, could, they only eat about 1,600 calories a day. They can't get any more. So if you could only get 1,600 calories, that's not a lot of calories, especially for a grown man. Most grown men need, you know, let's say 2,000 at the minimum. So those people, so we descend, our great, great, great grandparents were physically lazy most of the time. And then when they had to hunt something, they'd run real fast because they didn't have a lot of prosperity in the world. Now it's prosperity. Now look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. He ate a lot of food that didn't exist thousands of years ago, grocery stores like that. So he was able to get way bigger, way stronger. Same with the brain. We have all the tools we need. Every employee you hire is going to try to mentally leech you. Trust me. They are, I don't care if they have a PhD. I've never seen an exception to this rule. Not once, ever. The only time I see exceptions is top entrepreneurs that I know that are like, you want to start a business together. Those guys get it because they, that's why they're made a hundred million bucks. Anybody else is lost. The world doesn't teach them this. Nobody teaches this. Has anybody here gone through a school system ever heard this conversation about mental leaching? energy drains, glucose conservation of the brain, zero, zero. Every fucking school system, the older I get, the more I learn, the more I rage against the system. It's even worse than I thought. So what you have to do with Parkinson's syndrome is you have to automatically assume people are gonna be mentally lazy. You give them a task that's showing take them one hour a day and you give them free reign, they're not gonna literally be lazy, they're just gonna go way slower than they should. They're gonna do the job, but then it'll be messed up and you have to talk to them 10 times in a row. Can you fix it? Can you fix it? Can you fix it? They won't see the big picture. They won't be creative. So here's the solution. There's three solutions, three-step solution to this. Number one, always assume that people are gonna do the job wrong for you. And it's not being negative, it's being a realist. There's a big difference between pessimist and realist. This is reality. So number one, that's most likely outcome. You gotta go in with that mindset. The second you go in the mindset of like, I see people hiring people and they're like, ooh, I just hired this awesome person. Look at their resume. Look at it. I'm like, you're a newbie entrepreneur to this game. One out of 100 people will be like that. The rest brings us to number two. You have to build a training system and that training system has to be a real deal one. And you know, that's the biggest thing I've been learning over the last couple years is the importance of a training system. And then number three, the quizzing system. This, damn it, is the one that no one told me. Even my mentors didn't tell me this. Quiz the shit out of people who work for you. Quiz them every day, all the time. Now, eventually, when they never get a quiz question wrong, then respect them more and don't keep doing it. But until they get almost every question right, if you gotta do it for a year, do it for a year. So let's say you hire somebody who's gonna be your personal assistant. You say, hey, every day, I want you to check, you know, I want you to, I don't know, check my voicemails. Make sure there's no important customer support voicemails. Don't you, so you, so if you're following my three steps, the first one, you're gonna assume they're doing it wrong, but that in and of itself won't be enough. The second one, cause that might lead you to just training. You go, okay, I'm gonna train them how to do the voicemail. All right, you go here, you dial this pin to hear the voicemail, you write down on this pad of paper, you prioritize A, B, C, and you hand it to me when I come in and that's assisted. But you forgot number three, quiz them. So here's what you do. You come in the office, you go, what's the fourth voicemail? What was the fourth voicemail? If they can't answer, they ain't paying attention. You hired them, they can pay attention, it's not that hard. Now if you have 6,000 voicemails there, it might not be a reasonable request. But let's say you had five voicemails, ask them, recite them back to me. What were they? Just not word for word, just what were they? Ronald Reagan had some of the wisest words known to mankind. I use it all the time. Hey man, I trust you, but I'm gonna verify you. I trust you, but I'm gonna verify you. You ever meet someone come to hire you? You have a criminal record? 
No, no, I don't have criminal record. Dude, I totally trust you, but I just verify. That's just my game. I always do it. It's robotic. So if you don't do that, that third one is what I didn't even learn from my mentors. I've learned this the hard way. Once you put all three in, it will transform your life. If you do one or two of those, you're going to have a hard, hard, sad, frustrated life. Trust me. I have been sad and frustrated before. Here's a free piece of advice worth more than anything I've ever put on YouTube if you're going to build a business. You know, I can't tell you how many people I know got money ripped off from them. Michael Jackson went bankrupt. He, gave, he let his brother manage his money. You knew Michael Jackson? I knew Michael Jackson. No, I did not know, but I read the story. His brother took, or his brother just accidentally squandered away, what was it, a billion dollars he made? Half a billion? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the basketball player, gave all his money to a financial planner, and he had to come back to play basketball those last years, not because he wanted to play basketball, because he had a fire. His financial planner didn't have insurance on his rare Persian rug collection. He lost tens of millions of dollars. Bad investments. I read a story about, who was it? recently same thing i'm not condoning people robbing you but uh fool me once shame on me fool me twice shame on i mean fool me once shame on you fool can't get fooled again that's my george bush impression yeah fool me uh that is a bitch of a one to do while you're doing public speaking right no fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me but when it comes to money which is what your business is and your employees are affecting your bottom line financially it's the same thing. Check up on them. I did an experiment I've done once since I've been an entrepreneur of being super hands-off. It's, uh, it's not an experiment I'll do again. It's a failed experiment. You double check. And if you have a huge company, you've got 500 people, you, you know, probably can't check all the way down. But most good CEOs, they go down. They're, I forget what CEO it is. Maybe the Google guys, one of them. They go and sit with customer support one day a month. Like, they go from the highest billionaire status all the way down to entry level jobs and sit in there at least once a month. You don't have to go hate wire. It can be the simplest questions. It just asks. Here's the thing that's gonna shock you when you guys do this. Start with the simplest questions. You got a secretary, just be like, what did you do today? If they start by, wow, yeah, that means they did nothing. Jack Welch, largest uh, CEO of GE, which was the largest company in the world, took it from a small company like a billion in revenue to hundreds of billions in revenue. He had a rule. Every year, the bottom 10% was fired, no matter what. You could be doing a good job. If you were in the bottom 10%, you were automatic, it was like robotic. And, and then if you were the top 10%, you were given a raise, always. And in between, you got a warning. You better get in the top. So. I think I have those percentages right. I think it was 10, 10, and 80% in the middle, but I want to condense that. I want to be like, almost everybody gets a raise. 50% of people get a ton of money, and the other 50% is gone. So the main question, my brother Ben over there, hello Ben, his question was, what's some real practical examples? So assistance is a great one. Here's a thing that you could do with assistants. If they're managing your calendar, let's say it's a personal assistant, just be like, what do I have to do? Let's say it's January 1st. Be like, what's on my calendar? Look at your calendar first so you know the answer. Don't quiz when you don't know the answer. You can look like an idiot. Look on your calendar. January 17th, it says you have lunch with Bob. On January 1st, be like, what do I have January 17th? If they don't know, and they're the one who put it on the, on the calendar, it's a fail. Uh, example of somebody who's managing your social media. I have people do publishing for me. I did this quiz actually today. I said to my staff, I said, because they were, we were gonna bring a shirt with me that I remembered I already shot with on and I have an Instagram picture with me in that shirt two weeks ago. So I said to my house staff, have I worn this shirt before? Half of them were like, nope. Half of them were like, yes. I said, this is what you do. You know, you guys wash the clothes, you look. If you don't know. But what it is, is people are lazy, so they're not observant. It's what most of it comes down to. It's just observe. Perfect example. Here's a perfect example. We were shooting and filming. This happened to happen to me in 10 restaurants in the last year. We were filming. Look, show them how big this whole table is, okay? The dude came with the food in his hand. We were just filming right here. He could have come to anywhere on the table. He comes and 
comes right in between the camera person and us and is like, whose food is this? I'm like, dude, you don't see the cameras right here and you don't see that you could have gone to 30. People, it, sadly, this is why people get stuck at dead end jobs. They're not observant. That's why in the 67 steps, you gotta be aware. So mostly test people's awareness. So that's a good question, but test their awareness. Test around what they're doing. If you have somebody managing your website for you, be like, what was, what was the highest liked blog post I did? If they don't know, be like, why don't you know? That's all you fucking do is look at my website. You'd be like, I'm an entrepreneur. I gotta manage the bills, manage your payroll, do marketing, hire new people. You just look at the website. So my basic rule is, if you're specialized and I'm the generalist, you always know more than me. So there's no question I can ask you. The stump ability thing is a big thing. I promise you top level people you can't stump. You have anything to say to that, Zach? Let me quiz Zach. What did you just have surgery for, Zach? What's like the most masculine surgery you could have? What, Mark, what would be the, the one that represents masculinity the most? No, not, that's the not the, the, the <laughs> Implants, yeah, not no, penile like implant, the most painful recovery. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 Zach was defending the honor. Yeah, yeah I it. saw some uh, some ladies getting bullied outside of a club. Zach and so hip I, like, replacements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zach, yeah. that's the least. Hip replacements. That's kind of an old man thing. I was like, man, yeah. oh man, I don't care. You said on the camera the other day what it was last night. Oh, the penis enlargement. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 that surgery. All right, we're gonna yeah, cut yeah, the video right there. <laughs>